Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jeff. Today we're gonna talk about Photronics. The ticker symbol is PLAB. And before we jump into this, what is the point of our investing? What is the point of learning about researching and all the work we do before we buy a stock? And I'd say it's trying to get some kind of long-term edge when it comes to investing so that your stock picks do better than the average. So let's talk a little bit about this. What does it take to get a long-term edge? Like, how do you do it? Well, I'd say there are a lot of different tools we can use, but one of them that I rarely talk about on this channel is technical analysis. I don't look at charts and try to like read the tea leaves, you know, or figure out the horoscopes of the stock market. I don't really believe in all of that stuff. I think if it was really easy to just read patterns in stock charts that people who were good at it would just become insanely rich. And it would be easy to repeat and to show other people and then everybody would exploit all of these secrets in the charts until there was no advantage. But I do think that there is something to technical analysis. And if we think about it, if you really just get it down to its essence, it's about finding patterns in the data. It's finding patterns, think about that. And you know what you really wanna do, if you wanna do that correctly, is you need it to be repeatable. You need to create a scientific method, if you wanna call it that, which just means that it's not something like in your gut, it's a feeling you have, and you go and you buy the stock because the sucker's going up. That's not a repeatable way to profit through your you know, stock market wisdom. No, you need something repeatable. You need something that you can do again and again. Otherwise, what's the point? It means if, if you don't, like sometimes you'll pick a winning stock and then sometimes you'll pick a losing stock and you won't know the difference. One of the things that I wanna look at is just whether or not the fact that insiders, like the CEO, the CFO, the COO, the people who work within the company, if they're buying the stock, those insider buys are actually an indicator of positive good performance into the future. And what I wanna point out here is, have you guys heard of the Medallion Fund? If you haven't, it's without a doubt the most successful hedge fund ever. And it was founded by someone named Jim Simons. He's a brilliant guy. He's a mathematician originally. And after a career as the head of the math department at Stony Brook University and doing all kinds of other really smart cutting edge work in mathematics, he decided to start his own hedge fund. And he based it on technical analysis. What they really, what they did was they went back and they got all of this data from the past several decades of stock market transactions. And a lot of this was on paper. It wasn't computerized, it wasn't digitized. So what they did was they got all the data and they entered it into their computer. And then they told the computer through a series of machine learning algorithms to try to find patterns in all the data that indicated what stocks would do next. And then what they did over the course of the last several decades is they would trade in and out of stocks. They would do thousands of transactions every day based on these patterns that the machine learning identified in the stock charts. They got 66% average annual return, but not just one year or two years. Over the last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, they've done this outstanding outperformance. So it's not just a trick, it's not just a lucky hot streak. We're talking about something scientific. So what I'd like to do is look at one stock today, as I told you, the company is Photronics, okay? I'm gonna just write it out here for you guys. Photronics. Oh, there you go. Can you see this? I think if I put it here, it'd be easier to see. Then the ticker symbol is PLAB. This company makes photo masks for the semiconductor sector. And um, these are just a really integral part of the whole process of creating a microchip, a semiconductor chip. And what I wanna do here is look 
at insider transactions for this company and see whether they tell us anything. Um, not so much trying to get a feeling good or bad, but just recognize what's going on within the company. And then we will be able to look out, hopefully, in the next six months and the next year and see whether what we see in the data corresponds to how well or how poorly the company performs. This is a small cap company. It's a 2.09 billion market cap, and that's as of February 16th, 2024. And then if we look here at the uh, price earnings ratio of this company, it's at 16.45. So I consider that to be reasonably priced. And what I wanna show you guys here is um, something that's come up now. You can see this in Robinhood, that's what I'm looking at now, but you can find this information in lots of other sources. Now, under trading trends, I just ignore the Robinhood and the hedge fund part. But if we click on insiders, you'll see this green bar. There's one of them right here in January, which was last month. And if I click on that, what we'll find is 86% of the insiders bought the stock and 14% sold. And of those 86% who bought, they bought 325,000 shares and the 14% sellers sold 51.4 thousand shares. And then what you can do is just scroll down and take a look at the details. Now, this is the part, this is new to me because I think this is a new feature with Robinhood. So if any of you guys watching this video can give me some feedback on what all this means, I would really welcome that. Just write it in the comment section. But as you can see, it's got the director here and then under activity, it says, uninformative buy, and then it says accumulation of shares via grant or reward, 15,000 shares worth $431,700. And if you look at a lot of these other descriptions of sells or buys, they all say they're grants or awards. They're either disposal, meaning a sell, or accumulation, which is a buy. But this does not look like these people actually took their own money out of their bank account, for example, or their own brokerage and bought stock in Photronics. It looks like what happened was they either accumulated stock options or they disposed of stock options. Uh, this is not very clear. I think we need to take a closer look. Under these two right here, Rochelle Burr, we have informative buy, options exercised, and fully kept. And also the CEO, Kang Ji Lee, had another buy, informative buy, options exercise. So it looks like these two had stock options that were granted to them, which allowed them to buy shares of Photronics below the market price on this date, which is December 1st, 2023. So some of these dates are December and some are January. And anyways, it looks like uh, Rochelle Burr and Kang Ji Lee exercised their stock options. So it looks to me like these buys were not actually taking personal money and buying stock, but they were taking stock options and they were exercising them. In any case, I welcome you guys, if you know more about insider buys or sells, to, to tell me what's going on here, the detail. But I think taking a step back, we can at least say that insiders net were buyers of Photronics in December and also in January. So December of 2023, January 2024. So let's just do a quick comparison. And what I'm gonna do here is look at Excellus Technologies. This is another stock. I invest in uh, both of these stocks. And if we take a look at Excellus, we'll see that this stock here has a $3.83 billion market cap. So it's about twice as large as Photronics. And the PE ratio is almost the same, it's 15.72. And then when we scroll down here to the trends, when we hit insiders, you'll see that in November, December, and January, November, December of 2023, January, 2024, it's all sales. So there are no, uh, there are 500 shares sold in November, 2023, 865 shares sold in December, 2023, and 5.43 thousand shares were sold in January. So 
With Excellus, it doesn't look like people were buying on the inside, were either buying a lot of their stock. However, it could be that Excellus just doesn't grant as many stocks to their insider. So maybe there are not as many uh, stocks used as compensation at Excellus. So now we can see that Excellus has less insider buying when we compare it with Photronics. So that's just a little info I wanted to share with you today. I really welcome your input on this. What I'm gonna do going forward is just use insider buying as one of the data points that I use in assessing a company. And you know, maybe I'll have uh, 20 or 25 different kind of things that I'll look at. But if I don't make a note of this and if I don't track it, then I will not have a scientific method going forward where I can just spell out like, here are the things that I do before I buy a stock, here are all the boxes I need to check, and this is what I look for. Because I think if we all as investors can put together a framework and make it a process that we can repeat, then we have a chance at doing this over and over in the future. But if we don't, then we're left kind of um, hoping and using emotion and looking at stocks going up and hoping these trends continue, but that's not really a repeatable process. So uh, this is not investment advice. However, I do think that sharing this kind of information that we learn is kind of useful because it helps me to learn more about these companies and about the whole method of using technical analysis and will also hopefully help you guys in giving you another tool in your tool belt, something that you can use whenever you find a new stock. So I'm so glad you stopped by and watched this. Uh, please hit the like button. It really helps to push this video out to other people on YouTube. And if you're new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button and that way you'll get a notification if you hit the bell whenever I make new videos. Most of my videos are about investing in small cap stocks. This year I've been focusing on semiconductors, so if you're interested in semiconductor stocks, this will be a really great resource because I'm gonna be talking about new stocks in this sector every week, and I think you'll be able to find out about some new names and some new stock ideas every time you tune in. And I'm also focusing on ETFs. I'm an ETF investor. In fact, just last month, I made a pretty big investment in a new ETF. I think you guys would really like to know about it. I'm gonna be talking about it in an upcoming video. So if you're interested in technology and ETFs, subscribe and you will find out about this new ETF. At least it's kind of new to me in the next video. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.